Welcome to FRC Media News for Thursday, May 10th, 2018. I'm Keith Tebow. Tonight we have details on a new seatbelt buckle up campaign that kicked off at Durfee High School. Coverage on the unveiling of some new fire engine equipment in the city. And Mayor Correa's response to the recent decision by Phillips Lighting to close its offices here in Fall River and move to Mexico. But first, let's check in with the news headlines of the week. We bring in the digital news editor at the Herald News, Will Richmond. Will, welcome. Good to see you again, Keith. Same here as we move on uh, through the spring. A lot to talk about in terms of, I guess, economic development and things happening to uh, helpfully improve the conditions here in the city of Fall River. It looks like uh, Mayor Jaziel Correa's economic development plan may be taking a little bit more of a uh, sharper focus as the Redevelopment Authority met last night. And they're going to look at to, uh, into considering whether they're going to be taking over the economic development initiatives in the city. People may know that last year the mayor severed ties with the former Office of Economic Development. His intention has always been, uh, at least recently, to have the Redevelopment Authority uh, take up that mantle of uh, shepherding economic development in the city. And it looks like based on last night's meeting, they're willing to at least look at that. Yeah, this has been something that the mayor has been trying to accomplish for uh, the last year or so now. He's long felt that uh, the Redevelopment Authority is the entity positioned best to help the city out on economic development. So he is uh, th the group, which has got new members now since the last time he pitched this idea. And those are members that he appointed has become a little bit more amenable to his idea. And they are moving forward with a uh, community development agency uh, review of how they may be able to fund and then the redevelopment authority staff its own uh, its own interest when it comes to economic development. Yeah, and part of the deal would be that the uh, redevelopment authority would get upwards of $400,000 in funding to help hire a director and to also help uh, hire some staff to, uh, to take over the uh, economic development uh, policies of the city. Uh, in, in the meanwhile, they still, the uh, redevelopment authority still has an agreement with the Forever Office of Economic Development, FROED. Um, will that change at all if this goes forward? It would likely change. Currently, FROED is the staffing arm for the Redevelopment Authority. It would be so if this, uh, this I concept were to move forward, the Redevelopment Authority would hire its own staff, essentially, its own director, um, and they would become the staff for the Redevelopment Authority. FROED would no longer be needed and they would lose the money that they currently receive from the Redevelopment Authority for those services. All right, so something we will continue to follow, as we will uh, for many years here in the city of Fall River. Um, boy, even before Mayor Correa's time and other mayors, there's been talk as to whether the city is in need of a tourism director. I believe they had one uh, not that long ago, I believe under Mayor Lambert, and you may be able to correct me on that. Uh, they had a uh, tourism director for a period of time, but um, Mayor Correa is looking to possibly do that again. And the topic of a tourism director was up for discussion uh, for the uh, at the City Council Committee on Ordinance this week. And uh, how did they respond? Well, they tabled the suggestion at this point, but they did so with a sort of favorable tone towards uh, the the proposal. I think they they're looking for some more information from the administration, such as some exact duties and how the, the uh, job would, the res job responsibilities would be described. Um, so there seems to be some movement on this. Uh, funding for the position is gonna be included in the uh, FY19 budget. So, you know, it, it was included last year as well and eventually taken out during that deliberation process. But uh, at this point, there is some positive tone towards the, uh, the creation of the position they're just sort of on a little bit more of a uh, ask and answer portion of uh, the process right now. I know that when Mayor Correa last year launched the Make It Here campaign and slogan for the city, uh, I'm sure he envisioned that tourism would be part of that. Um, so this probably melds into the mayor's plans to uh, better market the city. And uh, he feels at least that if there's a tourism director in place, he could, uh, that individual can help uh, sell the various aspects of the city to people coming in. So again, we'll follow that as the city council 
moves forward into budget process very soon as uh, city budget will need to be developed by the end of next month, June of 2018. Finally, uh, this week, Will, uh, we've talked so much about the King Philip Mill uh, situation and late last week, the um, papers have been signed, things have moved forward, and now the King Philip Mill site is no longer in the hands of the city, but in the hands of its new private developer. Yeah, so this time, you know, despite other fits and starts and whatnot, it is officially official. It is no longer the city's property. Uh, the developer, Robert Corey, has taken ownership of it. The paperwork has all been signed. Uh, and uh, now he begins the process of uh, demolition with an eye towards construction. So uh, things should be moving down there fairly quickly now. And uh, the best news is that this is no longer in the city's possession. Absolutely. So... Uh, once that project uh, gets underway, the city will hopefully sooner rather than later will be realizing some uh, some tax money from that uh, from that from that property. All right, Will, what's coming up over the next few days? Well, there's been a lot of talk lately about the financial condition of uh, church parishes in the in the city. Mm -hmm. So uh, this weekend, we're taking a deeper look at the condition of uh, the diocese and how members. Uh, feel about their churches as well as the uh, diocese uh, school system and where they stand as they also feel the effects of shrinking uh, enrollment. All right, sounds good. All right, Will, we'll talk next week. Take care. All right, have a good weekend, Keith. We'll have more FRC Media News right after this. Next year, the city of Fall River will be negotiating a new contract with Comcast to provide cable service to subscribers. Public input is essential to a successful contract renewal. To collect this input, and to better position the city to meet its communications needs for the next 10 years, FRC Media has commissioned a community needs assessment. We need your help. We're holding a series of three focus group meetings to gauge community interest in the future of cable communications in Fall River. The meetings are grouped by special interests. However, attend any meeting you'd like based on your schedule. The first will be held Wednesday, May 16th from 3.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. and will focus on local education. The second will be held Thursday, May 17th from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. for local government officials and businesses. The final focus group will also be on Thursday, May 17th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. This will be geared toward local nonprofit organizations and the community at large. All meetings will take place in the community room at the Spencer Borden Elementary School 1400 President Avenue. Refreshments will be served. For more information and to register for a focus group meeting, visit frmedia.org slash focus groups or call us at 774-357-2391. Help us shape the local communications landscape in Fall River. Take part in our community focus group sessions May 16th and 17th. Here are some job descriptions on the latest top jobs list from the Fall River Career Center. Front End Supervisor, Ocean State Job Lot, located at 360 Rhode Island Avenue, is looking for a part-time Front End Supervisor to effectively support their Front End team, provide excellent customer service, and ensure all cashiers are properly trained. Job number 105-21236. Hospital Housekeeper, St. Anne's Hospital, located at 795 Middle Street, is currently seeking a part-time hospital housekeeper to perform light cleaning duties throughout the hospital. Job number 1050-2839. Accounting Manager, Liberty Utilities, located at 36 Fifth Street, is in need of a full-time accounting manager to provide management for accounting and financial functions for Liberty Utilities East Region Utility Companies. Job number 1051-0474. Charlton Memorial Hospital, located at 363 Highland Avenue, is looking to fulfill the following full-time positions. Operating Room Registered Nurse, job number 1052-3279. Telemetry Registered Nurse, job number 1052-3284. The Fall River Public School Department, located at 417 Rock Street, is looking to fulfill the following full-time positions. Summer Program Special Ed Coordinator, 
job number 10515119, transportation department clerk, job number 10515256. For more information on these or other positions, visit jobquest.detma.org or call the Fall River Career Center at 508-730-5000. Welcome back. Phillips Lighting in Fall River's Industrial Park is packing up and moving its international headquarters to Mexico. Mayor Correa publicly reacted to the news this week. The fact that Phillips has chosen, an international company has chosen to leave our city uh, is, is not a good announcement, and no mayor in the country wants to get on this podium and talk about uh, a, a company moving out of our country. Uh, there's no point, however, in spending a lot of time debating what we cannot change. An international company has made a decision thousands of miles away in a corporate boardroom to leave our city, our state, and our nation. What we can now do is limit the damage and address the situation for our citizens, and that is what we have done with all the partners that you see assembled here today and even the ones that you don't see assembled here today. And it comes down to two things that we responded to immediately. One, we need to get these people reemployed re -employed, and retrained if necessary. And that's why we put together partners at the Career Center, the Workforce Development Training Programs as well in the union to ensure that we can get those people reemployed. We're working with local companies in our community that have job openings to also get these people reemployed very quickly. And number two, actively marketing the facility that will be closing down, which has the capacity to employ 600 people. Imagine that, 600 people at one point worked in that facility, and the facility is large enough to still accommodate 600 employers. So one of the messages that we want to promote today to the public is that if you do have a company or you're looking to uh, employ a large amount of people in a manufacturing facility, please reach out to our city uh, here at the city of Fall River you can email us, you can uh, go to our website and communicate with the city of Fall River. He says that's an important piece today that we don't want to leave out. Well, it's a sad day. On April the 20th, the local union was notified of the plant closure. And it's a second, it's a second plant closure that we had with 1499. We had a plant in Wilmington, Massachusetts. That about, say, about five years ago. We were notified of the plant closure. We already had a proposal meeting with the membership. I got a phone call. I was out of town by the business manager at the time, John Horak, and management that we were to close the plant. The dates that we had to go into bargaining, Phillips utilized those dates to go into a fax bargaining. The impact of the closure. I want to tell you something, it was pretty sad. And now, today, here we are, again with Phillips. It's a sad day. But I'll tell you my responsibility is, I was assigned by the international office, my second district, uh, Mike Monahan, who is the vice president, to negotiate the effects bargaining. And we're going to do our very best at the bargaining table to make sure that we take care of our brothers and sisters. A third new fire engine was put into service this past week in the city of Fall River. Fire Chief John Lynch is impressed and thrilled with the latest state-of-the-art apparatus. You can tell the state of a city by the state of the fire department. If the fire department is looking up, it means the city is looking up. And I'm happy to say the fire department is looking up. We have a wonderful station, it needs a little polishing, but it's still strong like a fortress. We have new apparatus, but all those are useless unless you have good, strong firefighters. I'm happy to say that we have the best fire department on the planet. You have a fire department that is stronger than ever under the leadership of your chief, Chief Lynch, who I want to thank for his commitment and leadership to this department. You've got a fire department that now is growing its ranks, not reducing its ranks. You have a fire department that is getting fully upgraded apparatus due to the partnerships between our state delegation, our city council, the mayor's office, Mike Dion, and of course HUD. And that wouldn't have happened if those partnerships had not aligned. And I talk about it all the time that it really comes down to priorities. There's a lot of things that the city can spend money on. There's streets, there's sidewalks, 
there's buildings, there's demolition of old properties, there's all kinds of stuff, but it's about priorities. And this department has been one of my, as you've seen, top priorities over the last three years. And that's why we're here today. State and Fall River officials gathered at BMC Durfee High School on Wednesday to launch the Love Your Mom Buckle Up campaign. Here's more. We're here today to talk about seat belts and their critical importance in saving lives. With all the technology that's being built into cars these days, none of them are as important or as critical in keeping you safe than wearing your seat belt. I'm sure that all of you are excellent drivers. Unfortunately, not everybody else is. Other drivers on the road with you may be distracted or impaired or driving in an unsafe manner. And those are things that you can't control when you're on the road, which often lead to innocent people being hurt in crashes. Seat belts protect you from those other drivers who may not be as good as you are. But keep in mind that no matter how good of a driver you are, everyone makes mistakes. Seat belts protect you from your own mistakes as well. The campaign was launched in Fall River in response to the death of 19-year-old Fall River resident Hannah Raposo, who died in a car accident while on her way to her prom in 2016. Officials reported that Hannah lost her life because she was not wearing her seatbelt. Her grandfather, city resident, former city councilor Mike Mioza, had much to say to the crowd that included over 100 Durfee students. I got to tell you, to, to live that was surreal. Um, we sat in a room wondering. We didn't know what Hannah's status was. We were hopeful, hopeful. Did she break legs? Did she break her arms? Things that could get fixed. And I'll never forget, and it'll haunt me, but we had three doctors walk into the room and tell us, we're sorry, we did everything we could. Those are the words you don't want to hear. I looked at my daughter. She was drained, drained of her happiness, drained of her hopes, drained of her future with her daughter. She was devastated. We were devastated. Please. I'm speaking to all the young people here. If you're not wearing a seatbelt today, we truly believe if Hannah had a seatbelt on that day, she would be here. If she had survived that crash with a seatbelt, she would have been an advocate for seatbelt safety. We'll have more FRC Media News right after this. Uh, today we have our, our friend Biscuit down here. Biscuit's a seven-year-old uh, Mastiff mix. Uh, he's a very good boy. He was previously in a home all, uh, and uh, unfortunately they couldn't keep him, so he's looking for a new home. He's a very sweet dog. Um, he's got a little bit of anxiety while he's here, but that's understandable, right? Nobody likes to be in the kennels. Um, can be very, a very playful guy, um, very gentle. Um, I believe he would do well with kids. Uh, certainly does well with other uh, with other dogs. Um, uh, so if you'd like to come down and meet Mr. Biscuit here, uh, we are located at 300 Linwood Street, Fall River, Massachusetts, and we're a Forever Claws Animal Shelter. I would like you to meet Lenny today. He's about two years old. He's neutered, up to date with his shots. He is a little afraid of the rest of the cats, but he is very interactive one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I think if you had a quieter household, he'd do better in it. Um, not a lot of kids, no other animals possibly, or enough space that he can find its own niche in your world, uh, not have to be bothered by the animals uh, too soon or too much. But. Uh, he is very pleasant, he's very lovable, he's a very handsome fellow, and he still has a lot of energy that he wants to spend, but he doesn't feel safe outside of his cage, so he just watches the world go by around him. So come and meet him. Hundreds of families from the hurricane-ravaged island of Puerto Rico will be welcomed to Fall River 
in an official ceremony this Saturday. I'm called Bienvenido a Fall River. Welcome to Fall River. This is an opportunity for the entire community of Fall River to turn out to welcome the families that are settling here in Fall River. Right now, we're clocking about 250 families that have had to leave Puerto Rico because they have no homes, no electricity, no water, no access to education. Some of them are going back as things get better, but many of them are going to remain here because there's still no power in parts of Puerto Rico. So we are delighted to have the families here, and we want to show them that Fall River is a welcoming, wonderful community. We have about 40 different agencies that will be uh, tabling with all kinds of resources. We have a mini job fair with six major employers that will be putting jobs on the table, not just for families in Puerto Rico, but from any for anybody in uh, Fall River. The wiggle, wiggle Kids will be coming to do trampoline work with the kids, and Greater Fall River Recreation will set up all kinds of games and uh, activities in the gym. We have lots of food. Seth Hockney from Domino's Pizza will be donating pizza. We also have uh, the Puerto Rican Bakery will be bringing in some snacks, and we have a lot of things coming in uh, through Whitson's, through the school food services, so people will be able to have snacks. We have a DJ. We have a working room where families will be able to come in and fill out any paperwork they need to transfer their licenses to Massachusetts licenses or to sign up for English as a Second Language classes or to find out about child care or any kind of needs that they possibly could uh, to look look for. The South Coast Health Fan will be there giving health examinations. People will be able to do that as well. And we're looking forward to a wonderful day. Cuss Middle School from 1 to 3. Everyone is welcome. Bienvenido a Fall River. Welcome to Fall River. The City of Fall River will soon be negotiating a new cable contract with Comcast. Public input is essential to ensure the city gets all it can from that 10-year deal with Comcast. FRC Media is seeking public input next week as we host three focus group sessions seeking community input into how we can better inform the community. The sessions will take place Wednesday afternoon from 3.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. and two sessions on Thursday, May 17th. The first from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. If you've seen our promos over the past few weeks, that time has changed. It is 3 to 5 p.m. next Thursday and then again next Thursday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. All meetings are free and will take place at the Spencer Borden Elementary School's Community Room. Refreshments will be served and we'll also be awarding some door prizes. For more information, please visit our website, frmedia.org. Please join us if you can. That'll do it for this edition of FRC Media News. You can catch FRC Media News Thursday and Friday at 6 p.m and online at our website, frcmedianews.org. For all of us here at FRC Media News, I'm Keith Tebow. Have a great week, and we'll see you next Thursday.